morning. Uh, this morning before we get started, we're going to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So, this morning we are going to read from John 11, uh, 1 through 45. So it's John 11, 1 through 45. Everybody settle in. This is a long one, so if you follow along. Now, a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with, with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the, to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and you are going to go there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, and for your sake I'm glad that I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus, Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are Christ the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have also kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. 
Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had, who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, we are on week three now of coronavirus being inside and, and not having uh, service at the, you know, at, at the sanctuary. Uh, um, and, you know, it's, everybody's trying to, trying to get settled into this new way of doing things. And, and it's interesting to see it, too, because, the, you know, we're learning new words. And maybe we're making some up, but like uh, here we are um, under something called shelter in place. So you know we're supposed to stay where we are, and not go out unless we need to go get something. And um, now we've got this thing called social distancing. So we're supposed to stay so far away from people. So we're starting to make up new phrases and new words and all this kind of stuff around this whole thing that's going on. Um, and it's, it's kind of neat, though, if you, if you step back and watch, and even, I know you've probably seen in, you know, wherever you are, if you're watching this, whatever town you're in, um, you know, different things are happening. I went out today and um, to get something to eat, uh, and uh, it was just, it was, it was nobody out. You know, there's no, nobody's out doing anything. But, uh, you know, you, you start to see that there's, there's just, Nobody out, but but one of the things that's going on also that you kind of see is is some things changing, maybe a little bit for the better. Like um, I've been seeing more people out walking, more people out just enjoying the day instead of being, you know, going off and running and doing this and that and the other. You see people actually walking down the street and talking to each other. I saw some families walking today that I'd never seen before. Um, people are starting to. Uh, you know, and, and really kind of appreciate the things that they used to take for granted. They didn't realize they took it for granted, but they really did. Um, things like, uh, you know, even school, right? Right now we're having to do school at home and work at home and all this kind of stuff because we can't, you know, get around anybody right now. Um, but one of the things I thought was really neat is uh, when, because, uh, you know, Heather, she's doing, she's got to teach from home. And she's, she was doing a conference the other day uh, with her kids and some of the kids in class and uh, the teachers, you know, everybody was asking, hey, you know, what's going on? What, what do you want to say? And, and one of the kids, I remember, said, um, they said, I'm bored. I want to go back to school, um, which is really kind of cool because I was sitting there. I was on the other end of the table and I was working, doing my stuff and I was listening to it. And it's really neat that. You know, how many times do you hear kids say they want to go to school? You know, it doesn't happen very often. But they're saying, you know, I, I want to go back to school. I miss you guys. I miss my teachers. I miss my friends. I want to be there. I want to be together. Um, and it was really neat because it was just this, you know, it was this, you know, unsolicited thing that this kid just offered up that they want to go back to school. Uh, and then and, and another thing that's that, that you see is, is teachers are starting to be really appreciated more because they're, uh, you know, all this stuff that the parents are having to do right now is, um, you know, that, that, that the teachers typically pick up. The parents are having to do, you know, all this other stuff. So the parents are really starting to understand, hey, teachers do a whole lot more than we think they do. Um, so a lot of that's going on. You know, this is this whole dynamic. The other thing that's happening is we're, we're starting to get a little bit stir crazy, you know. People are, you know, they're being in silo. The isolation is is tough, you know. Um, 
you know, think about leaving, even in prison, that's uh, people, prisoners go in isolation to be punished. So, you know, this isolation thing is really not good for us over a long period of time. And, and we're really, we're just getting started on this thing. We're not, we're not close to being through yet. So, um, but this, this isolation that we're going through, we're starting to, to kind of go through this thing and we're, we're starting to miss each other, you know? So I think it's important for us to somehow stay in connection. That's when, that's one of the cool things too, with, with nowadays with the internet, you got web conferencing and stuff like that, where you can at least see each other. Still not the same, but it's at least something. Um, but as, as this goes, the, the thing that you start to see, and you, if you really look around, you probably are seeing it or maybe experiencing it, is people are going to start to make stuff up. They're going to start to make up rules and make up rules and, and reasons to do certain things a certain way. And, and you need to do it this way and not this way and all that. And it's, it's, it's one of those things that's going to, that's starting to come about. And the, one of the things that I have seen, and it's more than one instance, um, is people that are trying to meet for either uh, some kind of small group Bible study or even going to church services. There's, there's a couple of people I've, I've run into, uh, one guy that actually, um, that we do some work together. There's, they were still having, at least about a week ago, they were still having a church service. Now, here where we are, they've already said, you don't need to be doing this. You don't, you know, that's, you know, all that's off. Uh, up until that point, they were still having church service. And the, the whole thing was, well, we're, gonna, we're going to church service because, because we believe and we, we have the faith to that, that we should be there and we're not going to let their, our fear try to drive us out. And I've heard that more than once. It's almost like a little catchphrase that started to go around is faith, not fear. Um, and there, and, but that's being used in a way that to almost, you know, tell people, Hey, we need to meet anyway. We're going to meet because we have strong faith. We're not afraid of this coronavirus thing. All right. Um, now, now here's the thing is because if, if you think about it, cause, and, and this is all coming in this time of stress, right? Now think about this passage that we just went through, that we just read. Uh, this is Jesus and you know, when, when Lazarus, his buddy, died, right? That's a time of stress. A time of stress that's going on with Jesus and all the people around Lazarus. And these are a lot of people that Jesus is really close to. So in that instance uh, where Jesus found out, right? Because they got a letter written to Jesus, found out what happened. And from that point till he went to where Lazarus, the, the town where Lazarus was, and through all that stuff, okay, talking to his disciples, the people he met, the people he knows and loves and all that stuff, Jesus was told nine times in that passage that he didn't know what he was talking about. Nine different times. And, and one, of those, one of the times that I'm counting is one of the times when Thomas just blurted something out like, hey, let's go die with him. Like Thomas felt like he needed to say something, almost like to feel the air kind of thing. But, um, you know, so that I counted that as one of those times. It's like it was just some, some things was said, but it's like, what is it? Where'd that come from? But it, 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 the, all those times, Jesus was going to, to do what he was set out to do. But everywhere he went, he ran into people that were telling him, you don't know what you're doing. You're doing it wrong. Why are we doing this? But, I, you know, you know, I, yeah, I believe you, but it's going to turn out this way, something. So, you know, he was always being ridiculed about how he was doing things and, and why he was doing it. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, we're in the same spot, you know, because, because here, here's the reality. Remember, you are never above your teacher. If Jesus is going to get ridiculed, you're going to get ridiculed. Right now, it, it, here's here's one of the things about all this stuff because it's it's not that there's a right or wrong or anything else. We're all in the boat, okay? 
and people are trying their best to do this thing, whatever the thing is that they got on their plate right in front of them, the right way, right? All this is new to everybody. So there's no time for pointing fingers or blaming or anything else. Just everybody needs to own their stuff, okay? So instead of leaning on, you know, you know, faith, not fear, how about let's do mercy, not judgment? Let's do that, right? Everywhere, if you read scripture, don't take my word for it, pick up the Bible and read it. Jesus says, I don't want your gifts, I want your mercy. All the way. Now, while we're going through this thing, right, it's important to think theologically first. Okay? Now, here's what that means, just to keep it simple. Just your theology and a theological perspective is just how you perceive the world, you know, through, through your relationship with God. Because here's the reality. Everybody has a different relationship with God. And they're different. It's not one's better than another one. Everybody's different. Everybody's got a different relationship. That's fine. But with through your relationship with God, and when you look at the world, you need to think theologically first. So from, your, from that perspective, now let's look at the world. Right? So we're doing that. And we're going out here trying to do this thing that we've got going on. We need to frame it up in a certain perspective where we can get through this thing, right? And, and maybe we can learn something in the process. Because if you look at that passage, there's learning opportunities all around, right? Because I don't think if, if you profess to follow Christ, and I'm assuming that's what's going on because you're watching this video, if you're professing that you're going to follow Christ, then if you look at this passage, there are certain things to be learned in that. So if you look at how Jesus reacted, now Jesus is a Jew, okay? So Jesus is a Jew. Jesus, every time that he's going through this thing, he's getting ridiculed every time by his fellow Jews. It's not somebody coming out, some Gentile coming in here trying to, you know, accuse Jesus or or throw, you know, other things on him or whatever. It is, that's not what's going on. It's his fellow, you know, religious people that are criticizing what he's doing, that are telling him he's not doing it right. All right? So, and, you know, we have the advantage of, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. we have a Bible that we can read. But so we have the advantage of being able to look back and say, oh, no, Jesus has got it figured out. Right. But even though he had it figured out, everybody else was looking from their perspective at the situation. Jesus was coming at this whole situation from the perspective of this is what God the Father is sending him to do. If you notice there at the last part of the passage, he looked up to heaven. And he said, Father, I say this out loud because I know you heard me. And this is not for you or for me, but this is for everybody else standing around listening. So Jesus was going with the perspective of God the Father sending him out to do this, to bring glory to his name, to the Father's name. So it's not a worldly perspective he's coming from. Like all the other Jews, they were worried about the stench coming out of the, of the cave. So Jesus was going there because the Father and him were one, and he was on his way to do his Father's will. So every time, because what could he have done? Jesus could have said, hey, wait a minute, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm going because of this and this and this and this. I'll put you in your place. He didn't do that. Every time that somebody criticized him, he either didn't say anything, right? Just kept going, or he would try to explain it. So every time that somebody criticized him, if you look at this passage, you know what you see? For every criticism, you see mercy, 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 mercy. Every time is mercy. It's never judgment. Not one time, right? We're in the same boat. 
we're in this time of stress, so we should be following our teacher. So when we're going through this thing, and look, there's, no, there's nobody right and nobody wrong. It's just we're in this together. We have to own it, whatever our station is and whatever our position is. As we're going through this thing, we need to own our junk, whatever it is. That's fine. But just understand we need to be coming through this with some compassion and some mercy for each other. We can't be, you're doing it wrong, you don't have enough faith, or I'm not going over here because of whatever. Nah, that's off the table. We shouldn't be doing it anyway but we especially shouldn't be doing it now. Now's the time for us to come together and unite. It's time for us to be the church. The church is not a building. The church is the people. It's time for the people to actually be the church that God has set us forth to be. And the cool thing is, is through all of this, just like then, we can bring glory to God's name. God's glory can shine no matter what the situation. And I guarantee you that he will use this exact thing for his glory. Be part of it. Let's pray. Thank you, good Lord, for taking care of us. Thank you so much for leading, her, leading us along the way. Hold us tight. Hold our hands as we go through and let us walk in the way you would have us walk and be who you would have us be. In the precious name of Christ, we pray. Amen.